How the Bible came to us in the Korean language. It first came to Burma. And then translated into the Burmese language. And then from Burmese into Korean. The first Thai Bible was the book of Matthew translated into Thai. And that also was in Burma. One of the oldest Buddhist temples in the world is in Burma. In Burmese, they call Shwede Gon. And before, all the Buddhists in this part of the world would go to Burma. Because at the Shwede Gon temple, they believe there is eight hairs of Buddha in there. And Adara Judson trapped Judatha on the road to the temple. He built in Thai we call Salah in Burmese And at the Salah. As Buddhists from all over the world would go to worship at the temple, they would stop by at the Salah or Kriyat to see Trak Judatha. And they would give out books. In Burmese, over 164 million books they gave out. Uh, and in Thai, Thais used to go there before. The wife of Judatha, and Judson. Uh, translated the book of Matthew into Thai. And the first Thai people to hear about Jesus heard about him in Burma. Praise the Lord. And this is why here in Thailand, through the Korean, the gospel continues to go forth. What a blessing it is to know history. You see these things on my face? It comes from reading. Lots and lots of reading. And for the past few months, I've been doing a lot of studying. On the history of Christianity and Buddhism in Burma. And how it came into Thailand. Because once again, Hearing is very important. In the physical, what's the most important organ in the body? The heart. Because 
If somebody falls down, and we want to know if they're dead or not, we check to see if their heart is beating. If the heart is not beating, they are dead. If you go to the hospital, they'll have a machine that checks the heart. And when the machine goes flatline, there'll be alarms going off. That means that person is dead. In the spirit, the heart is very important. God does not see as man sees. Man looks on the outside. God looks at the heart. When you sit in church, you can make your face nice, make your hair nice, put a nice face on, wear nice clothes, God looks at your heart. And it's where your heart is that's important to God. Man looks at the outside. God looks at the heart. And how does God reach our heart? How does God change our heart? Through our ears. And that's why it's so important to hear. To hear the word of God. In Romans chapter 10 verse 13. It is written, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In verse 14, How then should they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? To be saved, we must call on the name of Jesus. But it starts by hearing. Hearing the preaching of God's word. How many know of the big boat called the Titanic? Have you heard about the Titanic before? You've heard about the many, many movies about it? Love movies. Big ship. Hit an iceberg. It sank. Many people died. They thought the Titanic would never sink. But it did. And they made many love movies about it. But in real life, when the Titanic was sinking, there was a preacher on the ship. His name was John Harper. He was traveling with his daughter. 
He made sure to get his daughter on the safety boat. And he said goodbye to her. Yes, he was going to die with the ship. Because people were heading to hell. And instead of saving his life, he went back to the ship to preach the gospel. As the ship sank, John Harper was in the water with many people in the water that were dying. The water was ice cold. Today we had baptism down here. That was not cold. No ice. In Thailand, there is no cold water. I have been to Doi Intanon. Only 4 degrees Celsius. At 6 in the morning, I can take a shower. That's not cold. There was no ice. But John Harper. John is in ice cold water. Preaching in the water. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. As he was swimming in the water and preaching, he saw a man. He did not have a life vest. So John Harper asked him, Do you believe in Jesus? He said, No. John Harper said, Well, you need this. And took off his life vest. And gave to that man. And John Harper continued to swim. And preach. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. The man wearing the life vest. Could hear his voice. Now where Luke Luke in the dark cold water. And finally the voice stopped. John Harper had died. And that man wearing the life vest. Who heard John Harper preaching? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To be saved. And he saw that John Harper John Harper was willing to give his life vest away. And died. It caused that man in the dark icy waters to believe on Jesus and call on him to be saved. He went to the church John Harper was supposed to go to and testified of how he got saved. How important it is for us to hear God's word and to tell it to others. Yes, there's only one way to be saved. That's by Jesus Christ. That's by calling on him. But in order for 
people to call on Jesus. They have to believe. To believe with their heart. In the only way they can believe with their heart. They have to hear. Back in 2009. I was invited to Ubon Lachatani. They had a youth camp. With Thai youth. Uh, and Lao youth. And the Koreans were sponsoring it. And they invited me to preach. And so I went there. But the pastor from Lao, who was bringing 30 youth to Taiwan, he lied on the paper. And when the Lao government saw he lied, they wouldn't let him into Thailand. And the Koreans were very stressed. They wanted the Lao and Thai people together. They wanted to take a lot of pictures. And now the Lao cannot come. And the Thai pastors were stressed. So they went to the border to try to fix the problem. And they brought me with them. And there on the border, I saw a blind man. Uh, was begging for money at the border. So I sat down beside him. I touched him because he's blind. So he could feel me. And then I began preaching to him. And I closed my eyes so I can see like he sees. As I, was, as I was preaching to him about Jesus. And after a while, my legs got tired. So I was kneeling down with him. I opened my eyes. And there's a big crowd of people watching. So I stood up. And preached to them. And after a while they left. The blind man wanted to talk to me. He had been waiting for two years. For somebody to tell him about Jesus. Two years before that. He was dying. He was blind. He was alone. He was scared to die. He was not a Christian. But he had no hope. He said to die while you're blind is the scariest thing. So he thought about Jesus. And asked Jesus. He was afraid of Jesus. If he cannot die and stay alive. He didn't die. He didn't die. So he wanted to know. How is he supposed to believe in Jesus? How can he become a Christian? No, and for two years, he had been waiting for somebody to tell him about Jesus. That day, praise God, I did. I 